Hola, how is everybody doing? This happy, happy uh, Sunday. I hope everybody has been doing great. I hope God has been blessing you uh, tremendously. And life is just great, not only for you, but everyone who has a connection to you. Oh, man, I'm so glad to be back on here talking to my family, to the congregation. Oh, guys, yes, where have I been? I have been working. Uh, I sponsored and um, managed to put together a Juneteenth celebration, uh, the first one we've had here in Rosedale. And so I was tied up with getting all that stuff done. We did that last month on June the 22nd. Uh, now I am putting together a political forum, meet the candidate type of debate slash type deal that's going to be coming up this Thursday. So been working, guys. It's been working. But got much to talk about, much to talk about. All right. The first video is going to be about none other than our guy, Mr. John Gray. <laughs> I'm sure by now you guys have heard about the other woman, the new woman, the second woman. Um of John, some woman he met at the Stella Awards. Now, why he was at Stella Awards by himself, I don't know. Um, Larry Reed said he should have been there with his wife. I ain't going to say you got to travel with your spouse every time you move, but I'm saying if you got a problem, you know, if, if, if your wardrobe is of such a nature that you got a slipping zipper, you don't know how it starts slipping, get weaker, or get broken, and it's just wide up. You, you don't know how these things happen. You need to have somebody with you who can help you with that. Okay? All right. Uh, but he goes to Stella Awards, and he meets this woman, invites her back <clears throat> to the hotel, and I don't know what transpired in the room. <laughs> The, the woman said that none transpired, but I don't know if I believe her. I don't know if I believe her. Well, why she got to be lying? Why? Who is you? Well, I'm a thinker. Okay? Now, if you don't want to think, use your brain cells, don't. <laughs> you ain't got to. Uh, mine is a terrible thing to waste, but a whole lot of folks is throwing it in the trash every day. But I'm a thinker. And I like thinking. The woman says she does an interview with Larry Reed on Larry Reed Live. And she's talking about this encounter with John Gray. She meets him. He invites her to his hotel room. This is why I don't believe her. Because she said the Lord told her, oh, bless God. <laughs> don't go to John's room. But she went anyway. <laughs> After getting in the room and the conversation starts happening and whatnot, he's been all nice and friendly. She says he lays across the bed and asks her if she would like to take a shower. She said, the Lord told her, don't take no shower. She ain't going to take no shower. But she took one. <laughs> she comes out of the shower. He has a T-shirt for her to put on, and she puts the T-shirt on, and so they're just in the room talking <clears throat> until he leaves, and I believe she said three or four in the morning. She didn't leave until 11. When she checked out, she got the hotel receipt. So she provided uh, a, a photo copy a picture of the t-shirt of the hotel receipt and I think he, she gave him some pictures of them together now I'm going to tell y'all straight out the door I don't know this lady and, and, and she's probably going to be offended uh, when I say this and some of you all might be I don't know but I'm going to say it anyway this woman here this woman here the second woman here that woman a hoe. That woman a hoe. She's just straight out hoe. She's hoe. That's what she do. She go to those events. She finds her good bishop, pastor, preacher, and do what they do. And well, how you know that? Because she said it. She told Larry Reed that you know Larry. 
Now, it's some, it's some men of God, it's some preachers and things I ain't going to mess with. Okay. The ones you hold with high regard, high respect, the ones you think are just holy, I guess, you ain't going to mess with them. But all the rest of them is open and fair game, baby. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. But she leaves out of the hotel room and boom, now she's on Larry Reed Live. After Larry Reed drops that video, a few days, a few weeks later, John Gray drops a video on his Instagram addressing his viewership on his show, The Book of John Gray, which airs on the OWN Network. And he's asking people to please watch, DVR, tune in. And now the show is not on at all. I like The Book of John Gray. I was watching it. I am upset that it's not coming on because I'm still trying to figure out what actually has happened between uh, the situation with the mama and that, 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 and that daughter uh, that they got into, got into fighting with. I want to know how that relationship is going. And, and if it don't come back on, I don't guess I'm going to know. So my question to you is this, guys. This is what I want to talk about. John Gray messed up as a husband. He did not handle his mess up as a husband in the proper form, a proper way. So it affected him as a preacher. Um, but in addition to being a preacher, John is also an entertainer. He's a businessman. And my question to you is, is if the man mess up as a preacher, should that mean that he should lose his businesses, his ability to make an income to take care of himself and his family? I don't think so. I don't believe so. I think that he messed up. And between him and his wife and God, they're going to he got to figure out how to how to fix that, get it right, get it together, whatever you call it, and get itself back on track and let's keep it moving. But should he lose his business? Should he lose his show? That's what I want to ask you guys to talk with me about. I don't think he should. I don't think he should. But some of you all may disagree because the show is about him being a pastor. And his, about his character and how he holds himself out to the people. So if he's messed up as a pastor then he's messed up as a pastor. If I don't want to hear him in the pulpit, why do I want to see him on the, on the TV? I get that. That could be someone's point of view, and that's why I'm asking for dialogue. Let's have conversation. Because <clears throat> according to a lot of you guys that are in my comment, you know how y'all come at me by John Gray. Lord Jesus. He apologized. So... Now that he has apologized for the mess, his mess up, should he keep his show? It ain't on. <laughs> now, y'all listen. My issue, I'm going to say it again. My issue with John Gray is not necessarily that the man messed up, that he cheated on his wife. Because as I say it, a whole lot of folks have done that. My problem with John Gray is how he and his wife got in the pulpit before the people and used the scriptures to manipulate the people, to try to make them feel sorry for John and what he had done. I had a problem with that. I still have a problem with that, and I'm going to have a problem with that to the day I die. I am not perfect. I have made mess ups and mistakes too, but what I have never done is got up and used the scripture to try to manipulate the people, to try to fix it, where the folks, where I'm trying to get the people to feel sorry for me. No, I made a bad decision. Now, there are consequences and repercussions to my bad choice, my bad decision, my wrong behavior. But what I'm not going to do is play games. 
Absolutely not. And I'm not going to use God's word to do it. And that was my sole problem and issue with John Gray. Okay? Now, I also want y'all to think about this. Y'all help me with this. Help me with this. And having thought about whether or not the man should lose his, his show, I thought about something John said. <clears throat> when he was talking to the people, he said that when all this stuff was going, he was sinking. He had no place to go. There was nobody really to talk to him because nobody was really interested in what was actually going on in his life. They were more interested in really the benefit that they were receiving from him. As long as he's keep uh, dancing, <laughs> you know, all is well. Now, I think about that. I thought about that in this respect. In saying that my issue with him was trying to, he using the scriptures to try and manipulate the people to feel sorry for him as opposed to just fessing up, man. It is what it is. Got the better of me. The new title, the new position, the new uh, attention. Just got the best of me. He says this. And I think about the fact that he is with Joel Osteen. When Israel Hutton, Houghton, uh, left that ministry, it was said that it was due to his affair. And now I ask myself, well, okay, if Israel had to leave the church because of his affair, why are John still there? Hmm. Could there be some truth that the leadership that he is surrounding himself with really don't care? As long as he's bringing in the people, which means he's bringing in the money. But then on the flip side of that, I have to ask this question. Well, okay, John, if you weren't aware of that before this incident happened, you are aware of it now. You now know that they are not truly interested in you or what's going on between uh, you and your wife or your family. They're not interested in trying to rescue you, trying to help you, trying to save you. They ain't interested. All they're interested in you doing is dancing in front of the cameras and keep the, keep the people coming and keep the money coming. If you didn't know that then, you know it now. So why are you still going? Is it a valid issue in the church that, man, I got so far off of the right trail because I had nowhere to go to seek advice or guidance? Or is it not another manipulation of the of words coming out of your mouth, trying to get the people to feel sorry for you when there really is no reason because you're going to just keep doing what you're going to do anyway? I'm just asking the question. Because you ain't stopped preaching at Joel Osteen's church. You ain't stopped receiving your check from Joel Osteen. You ain't stopped none of that. Even though you done told the people that you couldn't find no help. The people didn't care as long as you was, you know, to pedal with the puppet. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Arsenio Hall used to have this saying, he said, there are things that happen that make you go, hmm. So this is a question. This is a question. And I want you guys to drop down in the comments, as I know you will, and let's talk about it. Help me, guys. Can the man, should the man lose his show because he has had or made or experienced uh, an epic fail? Should he lose his show? Should he lose his business? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But as I said, looking at it from the flip side, I can see the thought uh, pattern of, yeah, but he messed up in his pastoral position 
The show is about him being a pastor, so it's one and the same. I can't. It's, it can't be real if you're over here doing this because you're showing me this perfection, happiness, perfect perfection, wonderful, great, woo. But I I know what's happening in your real life. You know that's supposed to be reality TV. But what what what? So I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, if you guys got any information about why the show is not airing anymore, uh, please drop down in the comment section. And let me know because I've been trying to find out, and um, it's just speculation. Um, but I'm aware that it had something to do with uh, ratings. His viewership for the show was going down tremendously, and. Um, so I guess after the uh, Instagram video drop, viewership didn't get any better. Okay. Well, listen, guys, that's all I got. That's that's I want to put that out there for conversation, uh, because listen, we're not we're not pastors. We're not pastors. Is 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 there a double standard? Is you know? Listen now, I understand that as a leader. There is a greater responsibility placed on your shoulders. I get that. So that means that that there is a type of character or level or standard of character that has to be in place in order to lead the people. I get that. Don't 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 think I don't understand that. So you can't be leading folks and doing any and every kind of thing. It's not going to work. So I get that. I get that. I get that. But if that's the standard that we're going to apply to John, do, would, should that standard be applied to anybody else who carries himself under the name of Christ? Because in some shape, form, or fashion, although we may not be in a pastoral position, we do have a level of influence. There are people around us who listen to what we say. And if we come across a situation that creates an epic fail in our lives, should that fail because I carry the name of Christ caused me to lose my law practice. My financial literacy class. That's the question. I'd like to hear from you guys. Listen, I want to thank all the new subscribers. Thank you guys who've continued to subscribe. I appreciate you so much. I love you so much. I hope you enjoy this video. I got one more for sure I'm going to drop. Uh, hopefully I can get this third one out. And um, I'm just appreciative, guys. I'm blessed by God and, and I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. I know I'm highly favored because there are things that God has allowed to come into my hand that simply by who I am, I'm not deserving of. So I'm very thankful and grateful for that. And I appreciate you guys and your support. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's it, guys. And as always, congregation, God bless you, family. And we will see you next time, all right? Check out the video I'm going to drop about Jamal Bryant. I think that's going to be good conversation for us, okay? God bless, family.